So the mission of today is really simple. It's to get some detail shots of some cypress trees in the fall when the colors are just starting to change and you have a lot of mist coming up off the water. What I want to do is have that mist featured really prominently and the challenge is number one, it's freezing today. Uh, this is way too cold for something like November 1st. Um, but I don't even know if the mist is going to be there. I, I think it's going to be there because when you get these really fast freezes in the fall, a lot of times it hits that warmer water and it kind of uh, creates that misting effect. So I think it's going to be there and we're gonna have that like misty atmospheric effect around the cypress trees. So that's what I'm hoping to get today. I have an hour and a half drive ahead of us, so let's go ahead and hit the road. So I just got out here past several different like ponds and small waterways and little just like creeks that came out to this area. and. All I can say is I'm way more confident that this is going to come together. We had some mist coming off of that smaller body of water type scene, so I'm really excited to get out here and see what this has to offer. It's about to get sunrise, so I'm going to just pack up my stuff and head out into the dark out here. fog coming out here and just photographing like those little fine details you get with a telephoto lens and basically what I'm trying to do when I come out here is number one be mindful of everything going on around me it's so easy to get locked into a composition and, and like continuing to photograph that as the light changes but I think one of the most important things that we can do is go out, find the compositions that work best, and then as the light changes, adapt to what's going on and, and what you're seeing in a landscape. Because with the fog, the atmospheric conditions that we have right now, the light continues to change. You know, sunrise light changes rapidly. So you constantly have to like be aware of what's going on around you and, and what the colors are doing and what your compositions are doing. Because when you get locked into a composition, a lot of times there's a better one a little bit further down or there's a different framing or there's a different way that the light patterns are hitting and the colors are lighting up. So constantly being aware of your surroundings and, and kind of what's happening in different situations around you. But honestly, one of the things that you can do with a telephoto lens is just constantly look for lines and shapes and, and the way things frame up within your compositions. I think one of the biggest struggles that, that people have when they're shooting like natural details or lines or shapes and patterns in nature with the telephoto lens is slowing down enough to create something out of chaos. You know, nature is chaotic, it's unpredictable, and we can often find ourselves getting frustrated with compositions and, and figuring out how to frame something up. So you'll see the scene behind me, here's my telephoto lens right here is pretty chaotic. We have just tree after tree after tree and we don't really have a, a great vantage point to shoot from. I think 
finding lines and pairing direction of lines is really important in landscape photography because if you have a bunch of vertical trees and you and you frame that up horizontally in a close range it can look kind of off and disjointed but framing that that composition up vertically and just having those lines fill the frame is kind of what makes this type of composition but that doesn't have to be the case all the time. Sometimes you'll have a little row of trees going all the way across the frame. Then you can flip that horizontally and find the right composition for that type of shot too. So it's kind of just figuring out what's the repetitive line going on in this composition and, and how do I frame that up properly? You know, we're shooting with a pretty long exposure right now of about two seconds to, to get that fog moving around the trees and get that water nice and still because there's zero wind out here and we can really dial that in for our compositions that we have here. So just as I was shooting, you'll see this log that's showing up on your screen right now in this composition. I was photographing this and I noticed something that seemed kind of off and I was like, what is that? Is that like a giant bump on the log? Turns out it was a really big giant blue heron and it was sitting so still because it was watching for fish and it just paired up perfectly in the composition that I had. And I was so stoked to see it that uh, I, I, you know, fired off a couple shots and I was like, oh man, I wanna, I wanna lower perspective. I wanna, you know, pair that against the trees a little bit better and reduce the amount of space of water between the heron and the trees. And I, I ducked down a little bit lower between the railing and I hit one of my tripod legs on the uh, railing of this boardwalk and it scared him and spooked him and he flew off. But I think, a lot of times when we get out and we have expectations of shots, we miss things like that. We miss seeing, you know, animals that might be within the frame or something that tells the story of where we are. So I think as landscape photographers, or if you consider yourself an outdoor photographer, watching for those things and constantly being aware of what's going on around you like there's so much going on here we have trees we have boardwalk we have tons of compositions to frame up the lights changing fast the fog is burning off we got to work fast to get the shots we want but we also have to slow down and, and be mindful about what's happening around us what's the whole story of this place and how do i photograph that best and the blue heron shot is probably one of my favorites from this morning that I always try to do when I'm out shooting is shoot till the very end of that light is finished and I'm kind of trying to do that right now because the sun's getting pretty high up right now and it's kind of taking away from the overall atmosphere it's burning off the fog and it's kind of ruining the compositions that I had earlier just because we're getting a lot of uh, dappled light throughout the scene but I still think in the shadows, we can work with what we have still. And as a photographer, I think we all need to work to create more interesting photographs and more thoughtful images. So what I'm trying to do right now is use the telephoto pointed down at some of these like cypress stumps that are in the water. And the reflection of the light coming off the leaves that are in the canopy is hitting the water and making a really nice red and orange and green reflection on that water so i'm using like a half second exposure f14 iso 100 to try to frame that up and create like this intimate scene this detail shot of this stump that's coming out it has the moss growing on it it looks really cool and i just think doing things like this 
again, tells the whole story of your experience here. What are the fine details? One of the things that I always try to do is you get to a new place and you see everything wide. You see the whole scene and, and you see the, the, the obvious composition first. But as you continue to photograph, like work it down, whittle your way down to those fine little intimate detail shots like this one that we have here. So takeaways from the day today, find locations that are within a two, three hour drive from your home and get out to them. This is a quarter of a mile boardwalk hike uh, and it's up in a corner of Tennessee that, you know, I've been to once before and I wasn't really impressed, but I'd never been out here in fall color and seeing everything in red is just inspiring. One of the most fun mornings of photography that I've had in a long time so find those like discreet locations that you can when you go out and you photograph nature so look for those places and, and make a conscious effort to get out to them and explore because you can't take great photos if you if you're not even out there so find those locations uh number two dress warm number three clean off my lenses i mean i had tons of just dust all over my lenses it's i mean i'm gonna have to post process and do spot removal on all of these and it's gonna be a total pain to get that out but just an overall incredible morning of photography i want to thank you guys for coming along with me subscribe if you want more journeys like this